So are y'all doing good? Yeah? Y'all, y'all, y'all need Jesus is what my shirt says. It's fun to see some interesting t-shirts today running around the room. And uh, so, yeah, it's just, just having fun today. I'm, I'm having a good time. I'm glad you are too. And um, anyway, I, I, <clears throat> I've had something on my heart. Well, I, I teach along this line a lot, but today I wanted to come back to something and, and um, poke around a little bit, see if I could encourage you um, in some, some things that I just think could transform the way you look at your time. So if you've got a Bible or some kind of a, a thing that you can look at electronically, you can look at your Bible, we're going to go to Ephesians chapter 5. And, um, and I'm going to encourage everyone, if you, if you can at all get there, get to Ephesians chapter 5 on your device. And if you don't have a Bible on your device, let me know. I can help you get one. I found out this week that uh, there is an app out there now that's really good that has a whole bunch of Bible versions. It doesn't take up hardly any memory at all. And um, I've got a little fancier app that I paid for, but this one is free. Free, free, free. You can download it, and then you've got it. And um, <clears throat> so I'll encourage you to join me as I'm reading the Word. And I'll also encourage you to, um, you know, let your friends know on Facebook. And then when you're done letting your friends know on Facebook, get off Facebook. That'd be good, too. All right. How many of you are at Ephesians chapter 5? Okay, a bunch of you. Okay, pay attention, because this is going to bless you. Nudge your neighbor and say, pay attention, this is going to bless you. This is. Chapter 5. We're going to start with verse 15 to get a little context. Verse 15. We were actually in here a couple weeks ago, this same area. Therefore, I'm reading out of the NASB today, by the way. And that's a little weird for me, but there's a reason. I like, I like how it phrases a couple of things, so we're going to, going to use the NASB today. Verse 15. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. How many of you want to be wise? All right, me too. I, I, doing stupid, I've done plenty of. I'm already proficient at stupid. I want to get better. Anybody relate to what I'm saying? You know, I've done enough dumb stuff. I want to do, I want to, I want to be wise in how I walk. Making the most of your time. Everybody say, making the most of your time. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to read this verse out of this version. Making the most of your time. Keep that in mind. Because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. I don't know about you, but sometimes it seems like there's not enough time. Anybody ever experience that? Now, I've, I've said it a lot of times. I believe there's enough time to do everything God wants us to do. And I also believe God can't think of something stupid for us to do. So if God can't think of something stupid for us to do, and I don't have enough time to do what I need to do, then I'm probably doing something stupid. And I've run out of time on a lot of things over my life, so I know I've done some dumb stuff. But when I read this passage and I saw the words, making the most of your time, I went, yeah, yeah, I want to make the most of my time. I really do. I want to make the most of my time each day. And I want to make the most of the time that God has given me on this earth. I want to make the most of it. And I've already probably not made as much of it as possibly could have been made of the time that I've been here. But I've made a lot out of my time. But I want to make more. I want to make the most out of my time. Don't you just hate it when people waste your time? Yeah. I, I hate it when people waste my time. So verse 17 says, the making the most of our time is God's will for us. Did you catch that? 
Let me read it to you again out of verse 17. So then, do not be foolish, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Do you understand that it's the will of the Lord for you to make the most out of your time? And that's not because, I need to get everything out of you. I need to get the last drop out of you, hacker. I need to get the, I need to squeeze everything out of you I can, hacker, until I get everything out of you, and then I'm going to bring you to heaven. No. God doesn't want to waste your time. And he doesn't want you to waste your time for you, not for him. I want to make the most out of my time. I want to get squeeze every drop out of it I can. And that's God's heart for me, that I would do well so that I could sit back and be, yeah, I made the most out of my time. I did good. Then in, Paul, or then in verse 18, Paul begins to give us some keys to not wasting our time. Look up here at me. Everybody look up. Look at me. Keys to not wasting your time. Think about that for a second. If I'm telling you the truth right now, if what Paul's saying is to help you not waste your time, this could be really useful. How many think it could be useful for you? Only about two of you. Okay. Well, it's useful for me. By the way, before I get to that exactly, there's a reason that Paul mentions not being drunk here. Intoxication, let me just say this, intoxication is not an evil thing. In case you've never heard me say that before, some of you have, but intoxication is not an evil thing. God created intoxication. Mm-hmm. I was intoxicated with the love of this woman and God drew me to her and it was good. Part of God's plan. When we do things and when we are intoxicated and do things, we sometimes do things that we otherwise wouldn't do. That can be good and bad too. Sometimes that's a good thing. We're just intoxicated and we just do something and we step outside of ourselves and do something that we wouldn't normally do. Now, if you're intoxicated the wrong way, you're going to do something stupid you wouldn't normally do. And if you're intoxicated the right way, you're going to do something that might look like it's going to be stupid but turns out to be more amazing than you could even imagine. See, there is an intoxication that is the presence of God. And God wants you to be intoxicated with his presence. Yeah. Being drunk with wine is dissipation, by the way, it says. And the word, literally, I told you a few weeks ago, is the opposite of sozo. We do sozo ministry here, saved, healed, and delivered. We want to see people get breakthroughs in their lives and want to see them, you know, get, get things that that their hurts and, and, and things from their past and, and influences from the wrong side. We want those things to be taken care of. And so sozo is the word here, but it's got a little A in front of it. So basically it's saying opposite of a sozo. Being drunk with wine will get you hurt and damaged and sometimes killed. And it's, it's not saved, healed, and delivered. It's everything but saved, healed, and delivered. So don't be drunk with wine because that's a waste of your time. See? See what I did there? God wants you to use your time good. What we want, what God wants, is to see his people saved, healed, and set free. And that happens when we are filled with the Spirit. Yeah. When we are full of the Spirit and not full of wine. When we are full of the Spirit, we get a whole lot. Anything less is a waste of time. Let me say that so I make that really clear to you. Anything less than being filled with the Spirit is a waste of time. Now some of you are thinking, I I don't know if I'm filled with the Spirit all the time. What if you're wasting your time when you wouldn't have to be wasting your time? What if you could be filled with the Spirit all the time and never waste any time? 
What would that look like? Some of you are thinking. D.L. Moody declared this. He said, God commands us to be filled with the Spirit, and if we are not filled, it's because we are living beneath our privilege. You have the privilege of being filled with the Spirit. And you can be filled with the Spirit and stay filled with the Spirit and walk in the Spirit. And anything other than that is below the privilege that God intended for you. Is most of the American church living below its privilege? The level that God has for us? Are we living below it? I think probably most of the American church is, but I think we can get there from here. And God wants us to get there from here. It's exciting to think about what it would look like. We call ourselves spirit-filled because we, you know, we experience things of the spirit. We've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. We speak in other tongues or prophesy or all these things we call ourselves spirit-filled. This commentary on Ephesians 5.18 I found interesting. Let me just read it to you. The present tense describes the ideal situation of every sense, saint. So it's the present tense. Be filled with the Spirit. The present tense describes the ideal situation of every saint. The command is plural, so not just to a select few. As being continually, not just an experience for special occasions, filled, keep on being filled, or be being kept filled. Filling is not a one-time event. In fact, the present tense aspect of the command indicates that we are not to rely on past filling or in expectation of future filling, but we can only live in the present tense or continual filling. I know it sounds a little academic, but he's just saying, it's not what you've had happen to you and it's not what's going to happen to you. It, what's important is what is happening to you. Can you walk in a place where you're letting him fill you and you find yourself being filled and you find yourself letting yourself be filled constantly? What would that look like? Being filled with the Holy Spirit is not an option for believers but a mandate, Moody says. Yesterday's filling's not enough. Today's filling isn't here yet. Or tomorrow, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Tomorrow's filling isn't here yet. I, I, I thought I was, I, I'd look at it again. Tomorrow's filling isn't here yet, so today's filling is what we need in order to move in today. Put your hand on somebody nearby you and say this. More Lord. Say it again. More Lord. Fill them up, God. All right. All right. So, what happens when we stay filled with the Spirit? <laughs> well, we could. Somebody said we get a little drunk. Yeah. As people, we often um, use our understanding to make decisions about spiritual things. But I want to suggest to you that that doesn't always work very well. The scripture tells us that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Got to have the Spirit to understand what's going on in the Spirit. And if I spend my time not thinking about what's going on in the Spirit... Without the Spirit, I might be wasting some of my time. I hope this is getting to your head because if you're not getting this, this is really good for me. Just stretch your hands out and say, get him, Lord. Yeah, I need it. I need it. Spiritual things are things that are experienced spirit to spirit. Romans 8, 16 says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. While we should do everything we can to renew our minds, and that's important and that has value, that renewal does not make your mind the center of your spiritual understanding. Do you get that? 
See, we try to renew our minds, but that doesn't make our mind the center of our spiritual understanding. We still have a spiritual understanding that comes by the Spirit. And the Spirit will often do something that doesn't quite add up in our mind because our mind hasn't had enough experience to understand what the Spirit's about to do. And the Spirit doesn't begin any move of what the Spirit wants to do in your mind. He begins every move in your spirit. And your mind is always catching up. And that's why it needs renewed. So, we're trying to stay in the spirit. Unfortunately, the Bible tells us that we tend to start in the spirit and then end in the flesh. Galatians 3.3 says, Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, that you are now made, being made perfect by the flesh? Let me read it in another version. This is the living translation, the new living translation. How foolish can you be after starting your Christian lives in the spirit? Why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? We can't do this with this. The gray matter will never be fully able to direct us, guide us, and get us where we need to go. We need to have a sense of what is it the Spirit's trying to do. And we can only get that by allowing ourselves to stay filled with the Spirit. Human effort becomes religion. Religion gives us a false sense of accomplishment because we fulfilled some requirements. But that's not what God's looking for. And ultimately, don't forget, 2 Corinthians 3, 6 says, the letter of the law kills, but the Spirit brings life. I want to walk in the fullness of life that He designed for me to walk in. I want to have everything that He has for me. So that being said, here's the good news. God doesn't ask us to do something that we cannot do. It is God's heart that we actually experience being filled with the Spirit. And the Spirit-filled life is more fun. Put your hands on somebody next to you and say, More, Lord. More fun. More of the Spirit. Some of you don't seem like you're completely convinced yet. We're getting there. Some of you, you're going to have to be careful. Just look at the person next to you and say, are you trying to get me drunk? <laughs> the answer is yes. I want you so filled with the Spirit, you're just a little, a little, I don't know. Because then you step outside yourself and you might try something crazy like praying for somebody. What a concept. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 and 10 says, But as is written, eye has not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. All the stuff that God has for us gets revealed to us through the Spirit. I'm not discouraging Bible reading at all when I say this, but you can stick your head in this book and read your brains out, but if the Spirit doesn't reveal to you what is being said in here, you will end up just like the Pharisees who knew their Bibles inside and out and knew a Messiah was coming but couldn't see him when he was standing in front of them. I don't want to be that guy. So, put your hands on somebody and say, lots more, Lord. More, 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 more. Get them drunk, God. Fill them up. Mess them up, God. Come on. At least some of you are starting to laugh a little bit now. You know what that's evidence of, don't you? Yeah, some of you get the giggles when you get drunk. Some of you start, start grinning a little bit. Start thinking outside yourself. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> we are people who are destined to walk in spirit revelation. Revelation of all the things that God has for us, that he wants to give to us, and he wants us to discover. God isn't hiding things from us. He's hiding things for us. And he wants us to continue to move into him, to receive all of the good things that he has for us. So, 
How do we get this spirit thing going? How do we stay in the spirit? Well, let me just give you this little piece of something. In order for the spirit to move, we must give the spirit a place to move into. Ephesians 4.27. I got lots of scripture today. I hope you're taking notes. Ephesians 4.27 says this. Neither give place to the devil. Somebody says, what does that have to do with the spirit? Well, if you can give place to the wrong spirit, you can give place to the right spirit. Oh. Some of you have given place to the devil before. One or two of you. (laughs) At least. (laughs) You've made room for stupid to happen. You've allowed yourself to get tempted into something. What if you just allow yourself to start focusing on the spirits where you start getting tempted to do things that the spirit wanted you to do? That's how you make room for the spirit of God. Matthew 9, 24 says... He said unto them, give place, for the maid is not dead. And they laughed him to scorn. They, the Pharisees and the people who had seen the girl who was dead, could not make room for what he was wanting to do in their hearts. So he got them out of the room and he raised her from the dead. Because he had room for what God wanted to do. Make room. Give place. Make a place Maybe it's just as easy as just acknowledging that this is his place. We talked about this a while back. I am a Bethel, a house of God. You are a Bethel. He's already there, but sometimes we just have to say, more, Lord. Put your hand on your own chest and say, more, Lord. Yeah, maybe you just need to get up tomorrow and go, More, Lord, and just say, come on, Lord, help me to make room. Maybe you need to put your hand on your head and say, more, Lord, get this brain out of the way. Get this brain. This brain's been in the way. I need more, Lord. Get this brain renewed. So more, because it's, you get it? Come on, more. I need, oh, I need more, more room. That's a choice. That's a decision. I'm going to make more room in my life for what God wants to do for me. Are you making room for God to do something? Or are you just wondering why he hasn't done anything? He is. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He is the dove. Sometimes we just need to make room. Well, what if I make room and nothing fills it? I don't believe that's possible. As we consciously invite God to be with us in our everyday activities, we literally make room for the Spirit in those everyday activities and see those everyday activities transformed from natural to supernatural. Can you see that? You can take your everyday activities and turn them into something that's more than just everyday activities. You can be a supernatural mom. You can be a supernatural mechanic. You can be a supernatural bus driver. You can be a supernatural school teacher. You can be a supernatural nurse or doctor or whatever God has called you to be. You can be supernatural at it. The world needs to see what supernatural looks like in everyday life. The, need, the world needs supernatural hamburger flippers. It needs supernatural ditch diggers. It needs supernatural Walmart cart pushers. What would it look like if supernatural started appearing in the most natural places? The most simple places. The most underrated places. The places that didn't seem that important, that valuable. What if you stopped looking at your situation and saying, they ought to be treating me like this, or they ought to be doing that, or I'm worthy of blah, blah, blah. And what if you just started being supernatural right where you are, doing what God's given you to do, right where he's put you? Supernatural diaper changes. Hmm. Put your hand on somebody and say, more, Lord, just give more. 
More, 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 more. I'm telling you. You're getting more whether you realize it or not. I'm not suggesting that we suddenly stop everything that we're doing and do something else. I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm suggesting that we involve the breath of God to breathe into the everyday circumstances of everything that we are doing. And then, what would it look like if people start looking at what you're doing and go, there's something different about the way you do that. Why is it that he does it with this look on his face of pure drudgery and you do it with this look on your face of pure joy? Oh, that's going to ruin your day right there because some of you like to complain. Sorry. You won't see Jesus modeling that anywhere in your scripture. And as we do stuff with a supernatural heart, we'll see the opportunities arise for God to do the stuff that we can't do through us. I believe God wants to do more in us and through us, and all we need to do is just make room for the Spirit. Again, touch someone and say, more of that Spirit, Lord. Get them. Get them, God. Come on, don't weary in well-doing. You might, you might be the one, make, you might lay your hands on someone here in a minute and they might just go down in the spirit and you'll be like, what? First time that happened to me, I remember I was at a Jesus freak event. And I just felt like praying for this girl next to me who had gone to the event with an injury. She had been walking through the backyard near her home when she managed to run into a fence in the dark. It was her and a friend and this piece of fence was rolled up. And then she couldn't get away from the fence. Her leg would not... The fence would not let her leg go, so they brought lights. She'd run a piece of wire right through this calf muscle all the way out the other side. But she didn't want to miss this Jesus event, this Jesus in PA, Pennsylvania. So she went anyway. She was limping around, and they had done everything they could do anyway. And she healed up, by the way. But, boy, she was hurting. I prayed for her, and she went, boom. Never happened to me before. And then I got the dumb idea that I had the power. I went around trying to do it to everybody. Nobody else fell. But anyway, it was really cool when she went down. Just like. Pastor Tim, I just don't have time for more. I have more to do than I've got time for now. Okay, let's look back at Ephesians again. What's the more that you need to do? What more can you do to make room? Verse 19 says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart, with your heart, to the Lord. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to God, even the Father. You know I've been preaching about this a lot, this giving thanks thing. Mm -hmm. This is easier to do than it was for them at the time, because they had, they had to sing and make melody in their hearts and to sing to each other and to speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. All you have to do is slap on a pet set of headphones and you can listen to Christian music all day. Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs can be all around you. Messages from great preachers are available on podcasts. You could be filling yourself with good stuff all the time. Almost. Even when you're at work. Well, I can't stop work and put in a set of headphones. Some of you can, by the way, can't you? Some places they'll even let you. But some places you can't just do that. But you could look around the room, figure out which ones are Christians, encourage one another every time you go by, take the opportunity, sing a little, hum a little yourself, be encouraged. And the biggest thing of all this is giving thanks in all things. Man, if I can just wake up in the morning and be thankful. If I can just start my day out being thankful. And I've been doing this more and more and more. Y'all know. I've told you. I've got the little app that reminds me to be thankful. I do. I've got a little app. It just says, hey, time to take a drink. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. You're so good to me. That's how you start to get yourself in a place where you're making room 
for the Spirit because you're thanking the Spirit of God. You're thanking the living God. So the more thankful you are, the more room for the Spirit there is, the more room for the Spirit is there is, the more likely you are to do something amazing. You won't do something amazing out there whining and complaining and pointing at everybody else and crabbing about how they don't do this, they don't do that, they don't understand me. It's not going to help you. And it's not going to fill you with the Spirit of God. It will fill you with the Spirit. Look, we live in one of the best times in history. We do. We've got, we got it. And you're in America for crying out loud. You live in the best country in the world in the best time in history. If you can't find something to be thankful about, come here. I'm going to slap you. Man, you all need Jesus. (laughs) If you can't find something to be thankful about. So listen to me. I am not suggesting that you do more. I'm suggesting that you get more out of everything that you do. Did you ever hear the phrase, less is more? When we invite the Spirit to breathe on what we are doing, He begins to work in ways that we never thought of. I'm going to say that again. When we invite the Spirit to breathe on what we are doing, He begins to work in ways that we never would have thought of. What if He could show you a better way? Now, jokingly earlier, you know, they said no crockpots for you because you already got three. Just want you to know my wife has three. Because we, we do a lot of crock at our house. Just saying. <laughs> Crock's a good thing. I like crock. My wife makes some of the best crock you've ever tasted. <laughs> Sometimes, God has better ideas than we do. You might not think you need three. You're liable to find out, like her. She's really glad she's got three. Did we use all three last night? Yeah, see, we were, see? Had guests over, we triple crocking it. Sometimes the Lord's just blessing you in ways that you don't know and you need eyes to see. Let me just say this. This should be the best illustration that I can give you. Everybody know the song? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Okay. What if... The Spirit wants to get involved with your row, row, row your boat. What if you make room for the Spirit? It's called a sail. You make room for the Spirit, put your sail up, and you're no longer row, 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 row in your boat. You're now beating feet down the stream with the wind at your back, having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. I like this. That's a good point, Tim. (laughs) Bill does that once in a while. I thought I'd try it. It is. Letting the Spirit in on everything you're doing is the difference between rowing and sailing. There you go. So whatever it is you got to do this week, and somebody will have something they got to do this week, Some stupid thing you got to do this week. Somebody, uh, I I had some stuff this last week. I I stayed in the spirit. I had to call some service people to get some things hooked up. I stayed sweet. You ever have that moment where they're telling you something that's not working and you just want to reach through the phone and lay hands on them suddenly? When the Bible says lay hands on no man suddenly. Yeah, but it was a girl on the other end, so that's okay. No, it's just, it's just you know, we, we just, but I kept in the spirit. Was hooking up something from my mom and dad, and, and it wasn't working with Spectrum. How many of you have been having fun with Spectrum? <laughs> okay, yeah, let's not go there. And um, was hooking something up, 
and it wasn't going good. And I was just so sweet to this young lady. And pretty soon she's saying, I'm just going to give you $15 off on your first month. And I'm like, yeah. Finding money. So stand up. Stand up. Get near somebody. Just get over by somebody. Lay hands on somebody. Everybody find somebody. Somebody to put your hands on. Okay. We're not going to be done. We're going to let you sit down after this, but I just want you to put your hands on somebody. Say, Holy Spirit, come. Give them more, Lord. Fill their sails. Give them bigger sails. Fill them up, God. Fill them up tomorrow morning. Fill them up tomorrow at lunch. Fill them up all day. Every day this week. Get them full. In Jesus' name, amen.